the science that i learned is concerned these are not interdimensional beings unless you're talking about the fact that they came from a completely different reality than we do so thanks for watching i hope you learned something don't forget to rate five stars and subscribe hey guy thanks for uh doing this video it's very interesting and i wanted to give you an introduction to uh the astrotometry channel to try to make it as plain as possible i'm going to stick with the big shifts the big changes um the, the primary concept is that matter itself uh, and energy itself doesn't exist separate from everything else. In other words, the patterns that are the electron, the proton, the neutron, and those structures are formed and reformed in the moment by the energy and matter that is everywhere else. And so there's, a, there's not a separation between things. If you analyze the the world that we live in it's consistent with that you can't take energy out of uh the world you can't take matter out of the world without creating energy there's the, there's a seal on reality that we can't physically break if you're familiar with the concept of super similarity and I'll, I'll put a link in the comments that we've discovered on the subatomic level this comes out in the form of an, a self-similar emergence in the cosmos itself and it indicates something about the nature of time. Time is, in a sense, movement. And the way that things are moving is what changes. When we came up with the idea of what's in outer space, we assumed that up there is just like down here. The seal between the Earth's sphere and what's outside the Earth's sphere. Now that seal is a part of a fold in time space and what happens is the, the on the molecular level the manifestation of things through space actually has a component relationship that is consistent with the photon spin entanglement that we observe in quantum mechanics and so when you think about the light that's coming from the stars the what is what is actually out there isn't what it appears because of the nature of self-similarity or super-similarity. So if you can imagine being an electron and moving from one hole to another in atoms, so an electron doesn't really travel all the way from one place in an atom to another, there's an inductive coupling that, that translates what we perceive as the electron from one place to another. And so it moves between these holes in these theoretical uh, atoms. If you were that electron, what you were seeing might look exactly the same except for a particular spin. In other words, you might just see a static world that was spinning that looked pretty much the same from moment to moment without actually realizing that you were being translated through space to a self-similar place in time. And so the physical persistence of our matter, we already know, is a sort of illusion. We already know that it's mostly empty space. And we already know that it seems to travel through time independently of our other sorts of movement. So in other words, if you look at the planet, how it rotates, and how it's in orbit around the sun, that movement is completely independent of other kinds of movement that happen here on Earth. And Einstein tried to sort this out with general relativity and special relativity, noticing that there would be a theoretical time dilation as you approach uh, a relativistic velocity. And the problem with what Einstein was using to analyze it is that he didn't have two separate notions for what time is. The problem is that there is a space in between spaces that composes our movement through time. In astrotometry, I call this hypertime. And you might want to call it hyperspace because it's technically a place, a space between spaces. But the reason I call it hypertime is because the movement through that space happens without time. There's no way for us to detect the amount of time it takes us to move through hyperspace. And so it's technically a hyper time wavelength that we as a planet are being translated through using the axes 
of the photon spin entanglement mechanism to be translated to a self supersimilar Earth that exists in a different space, and it all happens in between our moments. And so to understand the hyperdimensional science, to understand how these strange alien things can happen, you have to understand the actual relationships between our physical matter and what we perceive as our movement through time. So I hope that helps. If you have any questions about the stuff here on the Astrotometry channel, um, I would love to hear them. It sounds like you're really, really plugged in, tuned into this kind of thing. And, you know, I think what you're doing is great. I think that the, the whole concept of the, the alien science is, is terrific. I think that humanity needs to take, take the next step. I think we need to do that, and I think that you're moving us in the right direction. And uh, hopefully I, I, I've provided you with some help here. Uh, so thanks a lot, and uh, alien speed. Into space, into the space between spaces. <laughs>